Hey guys, welcome back to Spooky Spectacle. I'm back at it again with a face. Uh, today I'm going to do a nice little siren look. And instead of giving you like the step-by-step -step of how I created that look, I just kind of wanted to read spooky stories. You know, it's August. We're practically at Halloween. Let's start going. <gasps> I could show off my mermaid. I wanted to show off Petunia. Um, I got her yesterday. Uh, she's dear and close to my heart and kind of the inspiration behind my look. This is Petunia. She's a skeleton mermaid. Like, look at that. Hope you enjoy. I think that was really cute. I was 12 years old when the girl washed up by the sea to my little coastal village. At first, we thought she had survived a wreckage, but her skin was like porcelain. Not kissed by the sun. As the adults wondered what to do with her, she opened her eyes, light as jewels, and gave a little yawn and a smile. A couple from the village had just lost their child some days prior. Instead of reporting the finding, they took her in, charmed by her beautiful smile, and named her Haiti. Unlike most youths, he did not cook or clean or even learn to fish as she grew older. Spent her days sitting on a rock, looking at the sea, occasionally singing while playing with her light blonde hair. Her voice developed, and it wasn't long before she bewitched every villager with it. By the time she was of age, she had a dozen men asking for her hands in, hand in marriage. She rejected them all. This didn't stop the suitors. They followed her around eager for a chance to please her or prove themselves. Haiti didn't dislike the attention, and so the poor idiots grew more hopeful. Each time one of them worked himself to get her a pearl or a big fish or beat another in a fight, her smile would grow, wider, crueler. The women of the village all despised Haiti. I, on the other hand, didn't want to concern myself with a spoiled teenager. I suppose she noticed, because soon the snide comments started. Iska, I wish I was as muscular as you. If so, perhaps men would finally leave me alone. Oh dear, I replied. If that's what, if that's what you want, all you have to do is talk. Her pretty lips contorted, showing pearl white teeth. Your hands are more callous than Bayani's. Why did he marry you? If I were you, I'd be worried of a prettier woman stealing him from me. Or, do you think he likes men? That would make more sense. He likes hard-working, useful people, so don't worry about him going after you. She stomped on the sand with her delicate feet, as pale as the day she was found, and left. Her antics amused me more than anything. Each day I'd hear the gossip from the women, the tribulations Haiti made her poor suitors go through. She never chose anybody. One day, as I cut wood, some teenagers came by carrying a suitor. He needs help, one said. Haiti said she wanted a lionfish. He tried, but... The suitor puked. He was drenched in sweat with a high fever. A few times he cried out in pain while holding his chest. The men took him inside his parents' house to treat him. It was futile. Hitty wasn't fazed by the death of her capriciousness had caused. Rather, I su suspected she was proud a man died trying to satisfy one of her whims. Some men defended her, explaining it was not her responsibility for the victim of the victim had been so foolish. This enraged the parents. Hitty was malicious, not dumb. So she decided to lay low. She spent her days, who knows where, while the other woman and I sold a It had been years, maybe decades, since the last time I've seen anyone. I looked down. My fin was beginning to decay. My time was running out. As I broke the surface, I could see a large boat in the distance. Swimming closer, I saw a family of three on the boat. I poked my head just above the water, as a little girl, no older than eight, saw me yelling out, Daddy, Ariel is in the water! 
I quickly dipped into the water and followed the boat at a safe dense distance, every so often poking my head out of the water to reveal myself to the little girl, and without fail, she would keep calling her parents over to see me. The boat finally stopped, and I saw some fishing lines drop in front of the boat. Good. I got close to the boat, and as I ascended, I held my index finger to my lips, hoping the little girl would understand. When she saw me, she was about to speak, then she covered her mouth and nodded. She had a pink life vest on, bright blue eyes, and soft blonde hair that bounced around her cute face. Is your name Ariel? She bounced up and down. I thought about the Little Mermaid, something that I've not seen in a long time, and nodded. But you're old. Her, her words stung me. I scowled but quickly masked it with a smile. I waited for her to come in the water, patting the surface, making tiny splish splash noises, and she stared with uncertainty until I raised my fin to entice her. My fins, though decaying, are still a vibrant purple. Her eyes lit up and she jumped into the water. As soon as she did, I unbuckled the vest from her and tossed it aside. I patted my back and she climbed on, looking nervous, wrapping her arms around my neck. I glanced over my shoulder, holding my nose, and she mimicked me taking a deep breath. As we dove under, it became darker the further we went. My heart was racing. When I pulled her hands away and turned towards her, I opened my mouth. My jaw extended outward, my skin on my cheeks ripping as my jaw became unhinged, my teeth starting to grow long and pointed like an angler's. My nails became jagged and sharp. I saw the horror on her face as I lunged at her, sinking my teeth into her little neck. Large air bubbles escaped her as she tried to scream, but I consumed her. When I came to, I was looking up at the sky. I could hear seagulls nearby and feel the waves crashing onto my feet, but I couldn't move my body. I laid there for a while before I heard someone yell in the distance, and soon enough, I heard footsteps approaching me. A man hovered over me. Are you okay, little girl? Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I will see you all next time. Bye! Welcome up, guys. Wel welcome, what? What is up, guys? Welcome back to Spooky Spectacle. I don't know what I'm going to say for my intro yet. I don't have that. What is up, guys? Welcome back to Spooky Spectacle. For today, I'm feeling a little spooky. A little oceany. See? This is my problem. My brain is numb. Maybe you just need some food. You're right, I do need food. <gasps> I'm sexy Yoda. I'm okay with this. <laughs> it's so difficult, Will. Words are not right. You're running on no food. Garbage man just sniffed my garbage. Like full on <sighs> inhaled it. Okay. What do you think about my look? Yeah. Good yeah, boy. Hi. Hi. 